good time. All right, questions? I guess just, just for you guys, we talked to Bobby and, and Tanner, and he said, kind of keep it the same. You've been preaching that message for the last couple of weeks, and uh, this is the perfect time to kind of keep it the same, isn't it? Yeah, broken record last two days and another day here to just absolutely prepare. Prepare the best you can and then get ready to fight for 27 or if it takes additional outs, but a, another series. And I'm serious. I think that's our best way. I think there's been some times on great, great runs in the past where a coach or player start thinking I got to do more and I just I think that's when you force the game bad things happen I think we're just trying to get to the same number same mindset um, to go compete again and then we'll look up Sunday and see what's next uh, for us and I think that's what every team should do at this stage of the year is just invest in you know tomorrow night's ball game and and um We've been having good at bats. Can we keep our at bats disciplined? We really talked about every swing with a purpose and trying to keep our head and barrel connected. You know, every pitch, can we put our head in the mitt? Um, and then absolutely a great sound out of every routine ball that's hit to us to make a great sound in those head and eyes right behind that, that glove and then move with the game feet. It shouldn't be different, it should be the same. And that's what we tried to do for two days. We'll absolutely do it again today and then be ready to play a hot as a firecracker team like every week it seems we're doing. You mentioned the, the hot as a firecracker. I mean, you just have a team that's, that's right, you know, I guess it's about the last six in the SEC. Just to have them come in here, I mean, you know, how do you view that and just, you know, what really kind of sticks out about this team right now? Uh, I'm glad we're playing here. Yeah. I'm tired of hearing, man, every week there's a, is it Messina, is it Cruz, uh, is it White, um, is it Hines? You know, Gonzalez, Alderman, just the names change. Yeah. But what you learn, especially like our, with our first year guys, it's like, okay, you got that guy that's got 20 home runs every weekend. You got that guy that can hit backside doubles. You got that guy that can be a pest. Guys, it's the SEC. And at least we got, it seems like we got to a point where like, all right, we kind of know what we're dealing with now. And and kind of that, take a, take a breath, let it out. And, um, there's a couple of things I think that, that that's really helped us. Um, one, I, I go back to a Texas A&M series where we walked 25 in two games, and then we walked four games in a series last week. You, you're you're going to have a chance if you're connected. You can't just be in a good place mentally and 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 win. There's execution involved in our league because you're matched athletically every weekend. So. To me, that's one piece. We're making the other fella beat us, and that's a better recipe for us. Number two is Case and Howell, and that story needs to be told. It ain't a coach. These coaches are consistent, and it's their job. Uh, my job is to, whether we're on top, in the middle, or the bottom, to absolutely keep building young men, keep enriching and growing our program. This is the Case and Howell effect, and that's why our team is ready to play. That's why our team didn't have a letdown after beating the number one team in America and they went on the road and played their best series of the year. It's the Case and Howell effect. And uh, I, I, the wins should go toward those players and the leadership of Case and Howell, the losses should come to Coach Thompson and nobody else. And that's how you want a program to be constructed. And, uh, but I, I think those two things, I think we're making the other fella beat us We've been pretty good offense. We believed in our offense all year. It was exceptional last week for three games. Um, we've been able to dominate the routine play for most of the year, and I think all in all, we're one of the better defensive teams that are out there as far as outfielders being able to cover, the catcher, the left side, <clears throat> even first and second base. It's a pretty solid defensive unit. Pitchers coming on, and the Case and Howell effect is what's on my mind today. Pitching rotation for this weekend. Yeah, uh, also Vale, TBA, and I just think it depends on how much mileage who we dump in that ball game. And this is one of those weekends where I think it's really TBA because if we're behind, every coach does a different strategy. If you're ahead, uh, we probably go for it, and that might take one of those out. I think we need more flexibility than we need the last couple of weekends. So who could that be? It could be, uh, did, did Copeland get in one of the first two games? Did Bauman, he's like the game one guy that we've used time and time again. I don't think we're hiding anything from Missouri. All you got to do is look and prepare, and you know who 
each team is going to to use. So um, I'm using those two examples, and there's probably three more. So I just think we see how the first two games go. This week we need to do that. Herbert Hopes will will be out this week, of course, and next week. Although we did get a good report, and we will point toward having him back. So we don't think this is ligament. We think it's in the pronator category, and hey, he might not be ready then. But uh, I think that's what we're hopeful. And, uh, and if we can get in a regional, I think we'll start giving him a week off and then start throwing to get back to that um, and set for a regional and see if we if we can get there. So that's, I think, our best shot is to leave TBA open because I don't want to regret naming a starting pitcher and then after two days want, wanting to go somewhere else. You mentioned the, the case in Hall effect. I know last year you talked a lot about just kind of the player-led leadership of that team. and. You know, it seems like that's a pretty big point of emphasis for your teams. But just what what sticks out about him as a leader to you? Yeah. Consistent. He's talking to them. You know, the coaches don't even talk to the players after the game. Case and Howell, Bobby Pierce, Nate Larue talk to the players after the game. They give me enough respect to shoot by me real quick and say, "This is what I'm thinking." My messaging and making sure we're in harmony. So they give me some respect there. But I'm glad we did that because I think this needed to be player. Led. You know, our pitchers run their own show, so they don't know what to do early, and we keep talking about concepts. It starts in August, and then it takes hold. I think it makes, I think it creates more intention, intent, conviction, ownership, whenever it's bought into and then gotten. Um, you see the commitment with Nate LaRue, where we've hung in there with Nate LaRue, uh, but we thought it would get to our best ways where, where what Nate LaRue can do, because he's led a pitching staff to Omaha before, is that if you'll stay with him, leave him alone, he'll get guys that are 60 feet, six inches in front of him better. And I think we've seen that too. That's another, if you ask me what the third element was, I, that, that may be the third element. Um, but but Kaysen is just, he has a respect of everybody. When a ball is hit to him and he touches his glove out there, he's immediately into the next play. Um, when somebody don't do a job, you know, he's he's like us. He's well, he's human, not perfect, but he's coming. He's gonna let you know something, even if he's got to come pick you back up after the game or the next day. He just absolutely. I mean, if he he committed to coming back for another year when he was like, should I sign pro or should I move on with life? And once he made a commitment that he was coming back for another year, it was all in. And I'm glad we're not getting eighty percent of him. And then. I think about game three LSU, and I think about the series again against Ole Miss, and he's playing pretty good too. Um, so that's the boot, and I just, that's what's resonating in my mind before we get all carried away and start talking about ooh and an ah, and if there's going to be any ooh and an ah, and it needs to be with uh, challenging strikes on more, and the case and how effect is the two biggest things from before I see it. Now that you've kind of got a bulk of the regular season anyways, you know, under his belt with his first year in the program. Just what really sticks out to you about Ike Irish's first season here? Yeah, yeah. He, he was like our hitter in the fall. So he was already stepped on campus and had the respect of the clubhouse hitting. Was torrid starting out, was unbelievable. Um, and then I thought the conference would slow down a little bit. and. Uh, Boy, last weekend was fun to watch. Um, I think his best boat was caught. Groff caught that ball in center field. I think that was the best swing of the weekend. He wound up hitting a home run of the pool side, a home run opposite field, but then I still think the best swing was caught. The, yeah, the best swing he took for the weekend was caught. And if this young man comes back around and starts swinging a bat, half of what he was doing to start the season is to our benefit. And uh, again, he don't give it bats away even if it was a little slow in SEC play. He competes, he thinks about what they're gonna to do to him. When he pulls off, you can see him kinda, of, he's not mad at the pitcher, he's mad at himself of like the approach that maybe he just pulled off the swing. He's just, that tells me how locked in he is to what he did, so um, yeah. It's, uh, it's fun for this year, it's fun for the future, but uh, it's awesome to talk about a freshman that is like such a huge piece right now moving forward in the present. And, I think he's starting to heat back up a little bit, and that's, that's exciting.